Greetings dear friends, I present your attention to the most common malfunctions and breakdowns that occur on the Land Rover Freelander. Gasoline engines on the freestyling car are a 3.2 livery in line 6 from Volvo. One of the most successful Volvo engines in the last 15 years, reliable and high torque with a good pedigree. On the Freelander the engine is almost problem free, all drips due to the not very successful crankcase ventilation system and the rather weak suspension of the engine, in fact at this age do not yet cause trouble. The rest of the piping and the rainforest cooling system work reliably as expected. The motor is highly recommended for purchase, although it has good appetite. On a lobster crossover waiting under 2 tons in a city cycle, he will ask for 20 liters of 95 gasoline. Consumption can be reduced by almost half because there is very successful automatic transmission in terms of economy, but hardly anyone wants to feel sick. Diesel engines are better suited for this. After a slowly in 2012, the well desert in Line 6 was replaced with a new engine from Ford's EQBoost family. The 2 liter turbocharged direct injection is expectedly more powerful and more economical, but the problems encountered even with such a modest age of cars with fuel equipment and crankshaft liners, turbine actuator, and other little things make us assume that it will not be trouble free. But the consumption is lower and noticeably, it is quite possible that in just a hundred thousand run you can save money on one more such an engine. Turbo diesels are a real bestseller for Freelander. All engines here with a working volume of 2.2 liters, the so called DW12 series from Ford PSA. These motors can be found in other designs under the hood of Mondial and Transit, as well as under the hoods of a number of Peugeot and Citroën models. The design has few big points. Complaints are caused by the small resource of the crankshaft liners, associated primarily with the use of low viscosity oils in passenger cars. There is no such problems in commercial vehicles, and also with a complex injection system and a traditional diesel trouble with the EGR valve. The most powerful turbo diesel with 190 horsepower. In addition, I received a full package of problems with turbines, and at the same time, and incomparably great chances of burnout of pistons in case of malfunctions of the fuel equipment. However, due to the novelty, the cases of failure are rare. The resource of the turbine of the weaker versions is more than sufficient. On engines with a run of 200 250,000 km, it can still be native. For these engines, it is strongly recommended to use full ash oil with a viscosity of SAE 4050 and not recommended and with a normal replacement interval no more than 10,000 km in Moscow traffic jams and no more than 15 when periodically driving on a highway. It is worth remembering that to clean the particular filter which is present on restyled cars, it is worth driving at high speed on the highway more often, and the procedure for cleaning it in the servers for the motor is not very useful. And of course, a good technical solution in any case is to remove it, but the environmental friendliness of cars still needs to be respected and try to be maintained. And better or not, the way BMW does it. As with all CUVs, it is worth paying attention to the condition of the engine compartment, the cleanliness of the radiators and the installed underbody protection. The latter is often responsible for overheating of the motor in box, although branches and debris in the engine compartment can be just troublesome. The frequency of replacing the air filter in the manual is clearly chosen for operation in the city. If you drive outside the city, then it is worth changing the air filter at least once every 20-30 thousand kilometers. By the way, the intercooler pipes on turbo diesel are surprisingly vulnerable, they need regular replacement, and the intercooler itself needs to be checked if there is no protective mesh in the bumper. Pressure testing of the inlet is often not included in the capabilities of authorized dealers. Use the services of Subaru and Sev, they also they usually have the necessary equipment. Mechanical boxes here are from the Ford range, and there are no problems with them. I don't want to remind you about the dual mass light wheel again, but it's here and it's traditionally not cheap. The rear axle drag clutch in its actuator are also very reliable and with normal owners can, can withstand 100 or 1,500 km without problems. Rare refusals again most likely cases of an openly harmful attitude, because the couplings tries to prevent overheating and generally holds on to the last. Even the control system is well arranged, if the car is not bathed in puddles all the time, then there are no problems either with contracts or with connectors. Unfortunately, after overcoming the forts, it is recommended to visit the service with cleaning and drying everything that is possible. Liquid mud dried on the bottom and units guarantees not only problems with the clutch, but also overheating of the automatic transmission and rear gearboxes, leaks of all seals and much more. In the case of regular driving through mud, the bearings of the rear gearbox and all seals are most often affected. Automatic transmissions here are the same as on Volvo S80, ICNTF, ATSC, which means the same problems. With active movement, early blocking quickly wears out the gas turbine engine. In case of overheating of the transmission, problems arise with the weld body, so it is recommended to change the oil more often, at least once every 40-50 thousand kilometers. But in general, the unit is very reliable and comfortable. The main problems arise with constant off-road 
operation and hard driving style. All of those nodes have proven to be extremely reliable. The short service life of wheel bearing is often a surprise, but not too expensive. Besides, on most cars with runs over 100 of 1000 km, the bearings are intact. Shock absorbers and suspension elements are also served for a long time, sometimes without requiring serious repairs up to 150,000 km, the safety margin and high rubber profile effect. The main thing is not to abuse flights on dead country roads, because the comfort of the suspension allows. In this case, be prepared for six-figure sums for the suspension bulkhead and number of elements do not have unoriginal solutions, and the number of rare parts is more than 30. In steering, it is not direct, it usually brings in but the roads with dips, which often do not leave up to 50,000 mileage, and the steering column itself, which accumulates backlash and begins to crack. The complicated electrical part of the car is a little frustrating, but mostly these are what you might call little things. The monthly media system and various security systems, rain sensors, rear and side views cameras are responsible for most of the problems. To a lesser extent, the Tyrion response systems adds problems. It is also the sinless, but here it cannot do much harm. In addition, many problems will disappear after restarting the machine. No, this is not a classic range. Here you will not have garlands on the tidy, it is just that sometimes something will not work as it should. Upset or not is your choice, more often that none it's not worth it. The car is quite successful and in this regard you just need to have a share of tolerance for English engineering in this area. Your USB and pot may not work. No big deal, update your multimeter firmware. The mirror folding mechanism has a limited resource, just so it doesn't fold over every time. The tailgate lift mechanism can wrinkle it, wash your car often and park wisely. If the standard preheater doesn't work, then everything is in the hands of Providence. Or it is worth replacing the heater control panel. On this information about the problems of Land Rover Freelander is exhausted. If you know more or do not agree with what you heard, I am waiting for you in the comments.